So Gordon tonight, as Deputy Lord Mayor said, Gordon is an expert that has worked in CBD and mainstream regeneration and management since 1987. He has been CEO of Edinburgh and Manchester Centre Management Companies, a city centre manager of Oxford and Dundee, and he's an active member of the Association of Town and City Centre Management. So tonight we will hear from Gordon around different models, different ways in which town centres and main streets are managed and, and are run by, run by the local leaders in that particular area. After we hear from Gordon, um, we'll, uh, David West, who's with us tonight, who's also a subject matter expert in this area, he will make some observations around governance arrangements in Australia and overseas, just some brief observations. And Gordon, um, after David, we'll be followed by Mick O'Neill. And Mick O'Neill uh, is currently the manager of city growth with the city. And Mick has contributed quite significantly to the growth of the city over the last five years. And with a number of changes within the organisation, uh, he will be leaving actually the city council in a week or so's time to pursue new opportunities which are still to be determined. But with Mick's experience in city growth and town centres, Mick will uh, reflect on some observations of what might be some of the learnings and opportunities for the city specifically. And so there'll be a range of perspectives and opportunities. That highlights a quite important thing in this part of the city. When you think about this part of the city, it's actually all about food, food variety, food produce. It's really a smorgasbord of opportunities in this part of the city. And so it's not exactly a smorgasbord of opportunities around town centre management and different ways that can be happened. So this is my little prop for tonight, as well as a little timing indicator. So that's something we can just sort of enjoy. I did think about bringing on a wooden spoon, but it's just got the wrong, <laughs> the wrong message. So, we're, so on that basis, we'll just invite Gordon up to share your thoughts with us. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm quite uncomfortable being introduced as an expert. Um, I consider myself to be amongst the experts. Um, you can see already that I'm not an expert. This is a, a different system to what I'm used to. So I'll, 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 I can see what I'm supposed to do now. If that's okay. Here we are. Um, this is the second time I've been in Adelaide. I've been here for eight days now. Um, I was here 12 months ago to speak at the Main Street Conference. Um, and very much like your city, I saw this market district 12 months ago. Uh, I had lunch in it today. Um, I've been all over South Australia in the last week. I arrived here Monday evening uh, without my baggage, uh, due to meet the Mayor of Mount Barker in the morning, the next morning, so I had to rush about and buy new clothes. And then uh, my sat nav didn't work in the, in the car. So uh, but I was very pleased that I made Mount Barker, MacBonga, and Strathalbyn without the aid of a map on time in all places. So things, but it's, it's it, as I say, I thoroughly enjoy Australia. Um, since, since I was here last year, um, I've become an honorary Australian. My daughter has married um, an Australian to Queensland. I understand that Queenslanders are not the same. I'm, I'm learning about these things. And so I'm off to see, off to see Judy tomorrow in, in, in Brisbane, so delighted to be able to come here tonight to, to talk to you about um, how we do things in the UK. So as the, as the Deputy Mayor was saying, this, this, is, this is not about me saying what's appropriate for you. This is about me telling you how we've done things in the UK, how we've progressed in a journey. Uh, some of it may be relevant. I hope some of it's relevant. Some of it might not be relevant. I won't know until, I, until you tell me afterwards. So it's it's... It's, it's how we do things, so off, off we go. Um, although I've been involved in what we call city centre management, place management, since 1987, for almost a decade before that, I was a mainstream town planner. That's my profession, although I've not practised as a town planner since the late 1980s. And I get this stuff. Having, having looked at this and having read this document, I'm quite enthused by this for, for the market district. But as, as, as you heard earlier, this is not really about the market district. Although I might slip off, might slip off brief from time to time, but forgive me for that. It's not my intention to slip off brief, but, but I may do so. So I've not got a lot of pretty pictures um, to show you. So we're talking about process. Um, we're not talking about making places. It's once, 
once you've decided what you want your place to be and what the journey is going to be, is, is how do we do it? What, what, what mechanisms do we put in place? So way back when I first got involved, the UK had lots of street associations. Now I've heard you using that term as well even this evening. Now I don't know if our street associations are like your street associations. So I'm going to be slightly rude about the UK street associations. Please don't think I'm being rude about yours. Um, in, uh, the first one that springs to mind is the George Street Association of Edinburgh, Scotland's capital city. Magnificent street, um, full of very fine shops, uh, very expensive shops that have been there for quite a long time, and by new upmarket international brands. Um, and I joined this association as the city centre manager for the, 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 the whole of Edinburgh, the chief executive of the city centre management company. And I very quickly found that, that organisations like that in the UK are really not much more than opportunities to come together roughly every six weeks to network, to have a little drink, to see your pals and to bitch about the council I was getting involved. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't find them terribly constructive. Um, we, and, and we moved into what we call city centre <coughs> management groups, which is a partnership model. We bring together the council with the statutory responsibilities and the money and other relevant um, public sector organisations and we populate that group with relevant businesses from the city centre. We try to get a representation, a, repre a, a, a big cross-section of types of business, size of business, ownerships of business, that type of thing. And we all came together and we worked on strategies, planner strategy, market fiscal strategy, that's what we do. We worked on, we worked on strategies, but we took it one step further uh, and we worked together on the implementation of these strategies. Now, you're going to hear a lot of something about business improvement districts later and the more modern models. They tend not to do that. I don't think that's correct, but they tend not to do that. And I'll come back to that again. So that was sort of pre-1990, the first one. The second one is post-1990. And um, gradually over the next decade, the city centre managers popped up and I became one of them. It was essentially, in my case, it was being funded by the local council they're being told, off you go, find an office out there someplace, you're our contribution to this partnership. Um, so I would work, not, they weren't formally incorporated by uh, uh, companies, they were again a bit like grand organisations, wooden street organisations. And it was my role and the role of my peers in other cities to be champions. To be champions for the, the town, the town centre, or the, in, your, in your parlance, the CBD, precinct, main streets. We were the champions, we were the executive resource, we were paid, so any money that we raised was spent on, spent on our, uh, our, our projects. Um, but there was an inherent weakness. But that all worked very well for an inherent organisation. When the council was happy with what the businesses were doing, everybody was happy. If there was a bit of tension, then I would get rid of it a little bit. And I appeared to get rid of it a little bit. So uh, the, the, the partnerships weren't really as independent as we wanted them to be. You may or may not want your partnerships and your models to be, to be, to be independent of thought and deed, um, but certainly at that time in the UK, we wanted them to be independent. So many of us at that point moved on to um, what are called uh, incorporated partnership bodies. Now, that was, in, in my personal case, that was Edinburgh and Manchester. That was uh, a, a company that was limited by guarantee. I think we could have these, these same models here. You know, the, the members of the company were exposed by a pound if things went wrong, uh, to the extent of a pound. Uh, not for profit organisations. Um, so we, and, and, well, let me tell you about the two boards that I worked for. First, first of all, in Edinburgh, <coughs> my chairman was a, a retired, early retired, um, former chairman of KPMG in Edinburgh. So he was the man that knew how to run the companies, etc. Um, I had, the board was initially seven. And I had three city councillors on the board. Um, two local councillors, I don't know if you've had the same thing here, but um, the, the, the city centre was, was, I'm not sure it was as big as I believe in geographic terms, but, but the, the councillors have wards for their geographic responsibilities. So we had, we had more than one um, ward in the centre, so we took, or we were given two ward representatives. And uh, a gentleman who was at the time 
and the deputy leader of Edinburgh City Council is now the leader of Edinburgh City Council. Um, so, so there was a three three councillors and four businesses, um, one retailer, uh, the most currently most prestigious retailer in city centres in the UK is a company called John Lewis. Um, the nearest one is, and you'll forget the name, it's Myers and who's the other one? David Jones. David Jones. So it's, it's similar, I think, to, to David Jones. Um, so the, man the managing director of David Jones in Edinburgh was on the board. The group property director of the Royal Bank of Scotland, well, yes, uh, who at that time was the largest bank in the world, not so anymore. Um, uh, he, he, was, he was on the board, and also I think it was at that time he was the chairman of, of um, Jones Lang LaSalle in, in Scotland. So it was a quite powerful board. But um, we then decided to extend it to a better, better representation. So it, it, was, it was a bit corporate. Um, it was good that the corporates were there, but we felt that we wanted to have um, more independent businesses, more retailers, more small ones. So we got a good cross section. We went up to about, to about 15. And um, I don't think it worked so well. It's not because of who was there, it's because of the number of people that were around the table. It started to operate more like a committee than a board of directors. They had a legal responsibility. As a board of directors, of course, they've got a legal responsibility to run the company. Um, there were other means, which we used anyway, to to involve people with all sorts of networking groups and delivery groups, etc. Um, and the, the board itself, I just felt was, was too big. And uh, when I went to Manchester, we had the same challenge. Uh, when I was in Edinburgh, we, my, the chairman and I were responsible for setting up the company. In Manchester, I inherited a structure that was there. But it was the same sort of structure that uh, I left in Edinburgh. It was too big. And I just felt that um, some of the some of the organisations, not the businesses, but some of the organisations that were there, um, felt that they were representatives of what they were doing. And the board of directors were not representatives. The legal responsibility is to act in the best interest of the company, not to act in the best interest of their own sponsoring organisation. So there were difficulties. I'll, I'll just alert you to that so that you you can reach your own view on um, on how you would like to, if, if you go down this route how you would like to, 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 to structure a board or a partnership body. Um, but in both cases, both in, in cases in Edinburgh and in Manchester, um, mostly in Edinburgh, we drove the agenda for place making, place managing in the city centre. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that, I've got a slide that there's got some pictures in it for you later on, I'll, I'll, um, I'll cover that at, at that point. So, that was an evolution um, until around about, I don't know, less than 10 years ago. And there were weaknesses. There was a set of separate weaknesses. These, these business or these organizations I'm describing, every single one of them existed entirely by voluntary financial giving. There was no compulsion to vote at all. So in the smaller cities, <coughs> you know what it's like to go around and knock on people's doors, you come to an organization like this and ask them for money. And they say yes or no, depending on how good your sales pitch is and how good your organization is at delivering things. Um, so in, in, in some cases that worked well, in some cases it didn't. In, in Edinburgh I found it um, much easier than elsewhere because Edinburgh is a city that's in lots of corporate headquarters, um, not branch offices, etc. So at that time we had the Royal Bank of Scotland, we had the Bank of Scotland, we had all sorts of challenger banks that, 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 that probably not known internationally at this stage. And big pension funds, organisations like Standard Life and Scottish Wings, etc. Um, and that's just the financial sector, there were other, other things as well, big headquarters of breweries, etc. Um, and we, we asked them for money. Um, and actually these guys were the easiest ones to convince. Um, and one of just, I don't know how relevant this is because I don't think the city is well enough, but, but, but the sales pitch essentially in Edinburgh to these big financial institutions was um, that they were competing internationally, not just for labour, uh, sorry, not just for business, but they were competing internationally for labour as well. But where are all the big international financial centres? They're not in Edinburgh, even though it's the second, second, second financial centre in Europe at the time. 
big stones. Um, these, these guys are all in London, New York, or Hong Kong, the uh, media in Sydney. Um, and why, why would they want to, you know, from these big congregations, why would they want to come to a small city like Edinburgh? Um, Edinburgh, the congregations wouldn't want to be used for Edinburgh. It's less than 400,000, the, the, the entire spread. Um, not just the council area, that's, that's the entire spread. So why would, why would these people who have vast sums elsewhere come? And I have tried to answer my own question. I just did this one, it's because I love the God. Um, and, and, and I said to them, so you can read the International for Labour, how, how, did, how, how, how would that, these, these people um, judge Edinburgh or judge, judge working for you? First of all, it's what's the package. Second of all, it's what's the brand. What you, what you like as a company to work for. And thirdly, it's what does Edinburgh like as a place to live and to work. And the first time I said that to, uh, to somebody very, very senior in the world back, he said, no, you don't understand, but it's completely wrong. I thought, okay, that wouldn't work well here, is it? But he said, no, ne never thought about it in these terms before. But actually, you've got to completely back the front. We don't negotiate with these people. They know what they're worth, and we know what they're worth, and we give them their five million or whatever it is. That's never a point. Point of issue, we wouldn't be speaking to them if, uh, if we weren't willing to pay the going rate, and we know the going rate. And they wouldn't be speaking to us if they didn't like the brand. Um, they do their homework at that. Uh, if anybody does their homework for a job, but you know, especially at that level, they do their homework quite seriously. So these are just not issues. Now you come to mention it. What is it ever like as a place to live and work? It's the fundamental thing, and we need to get this right. Um, so think about it yourself. And, what, what's important for you? What would be important for you if you decided to move to you know, Sydney, for example, um, in terms of quality of life? For most people, it needs housing, it needs education. But once you get beyond that, it's all about urban centres, isn't it? That's, that's, that, that's, where the, that's where the action happens. Do you like the urban centre? Who's somebody like the centre of Edinburgh? And then I said, right, I've got that. How much money do you want? Um, and we got some. Um, not as much as I asked for, but we got some. Um, and, and, uh, these organisations would, would give us a flat rate of five thousand pounds each, but others, when we went in at the right level, gave us ten times that. So the Standard Life, for example, a big, a big pension fund, um, and other things. <coughs> we um, went back to see them after a few years and said, "Thank you very much for five thousand pounds, but it's not enough. We want fifty thousand pounds, please." Um, and the chief executive said, well, what do you want it for? So we gave him a few projects and said, this is what we want to spend the money on. Um, and uh, he said, I'll think about it, come back in two weeks. And we did, and he said to me, sorry, you're not getting your £50,000. I am going to give you. And he gets paid more than £50,000 a year, and he's going to work on your project, which I'll, which I'll come to in a moment, which is about physical regeneration of a, of a media like this. So we got an, an expert in the property development to assist our little company that no powers, um, no legal responsibilities, precious little money, etc. So I mean, that, that's the top end, but the bottom end, you know, we go around you know, in smaller cities asking for money here and there. And it's really just not sustainable at all. It's not a sustainable business model. Um, so we started to look at our reserve in the mid 1990s for a, a sustainable business model for our strategic partnerships. They also led to, to tough wars. Um, the usual, you know, organisation out there, council responsibilities, and there were far too many wars going on about parking tanks on people's lawns, etc. Again, one of the more significant things is the businesses themselves come up with this term free loading. If there's a hundred businesses in a, in, a, in a street or a market district area, 592 in a market district area, and you ask people to contribute voluntarily, 592 are not going to contribute. No, 100 might, but not 592. So the term that, they, that the 100 who contributed uh, uh, coined is free loading. They are the free loaders. We put the money in and they get the same benefits as us. That's not fair. So that, that this was one of the biggest drags we had on, on these sorts of business models. Um, and when you're asking people for money, it kind of goes like that. No, it doesn't go like that, it goes like that. And it's difficult, difficult to that. And of course, people who put in the big sums of money, they expect, many of them, not all of them, but they expect to have more influence. Um, that was certainly the case in Manchester, but the chairman I had in Edinburgh 
It's quite telling that that's not that's not been done. That's not been for the governance. People should not be buying seats on the road. Um, a very eloquent man who was more able than me to, to deal with that matter. Um, also, apart from the chief executive status of the two big uh, the two big cities, often we found that our city centre managers, our place managers, were appointed at too low level. It's often done because councils often led the appointment process. So, you know, if you're the chief executive of a council, you might say, right, could you arrange for, this is your name of the business, could you arrange for that appointment? Well, human nature being what it is, if, if I'm paid that, if I'm, if I'm asked to do that by the chief executive, and I'm paid that, I'll either put it down there and grab the charge, or put it just a little bit higher because I want to get that job. Not always like that, but the cynical span is that way. But that, that happened an awful lot. And I just think it was at too low a level in too many cities. So the, the, the individuals were not sufficiently influential. So with all these with all these challenges, we we thought we need a new business model, one that one that works. Um, and we looked across the Atlantic and we found in Canada and in USA we found business improvement districts. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the concept of business improvement districts. We tweaked, we couldn't use the same legislation as, uh, as the Americans, the American states, um, but the model is very much the same. Um, so forgive me if I'm telling you what you already know, but this is a, a, a system where businesses come together, businesses, property owners in the US, property occupiers in, in, in England, and property occupiers and or property owners in Scotland. London is just moving ahead to property owners and occupiers as well, not the rest of England, just, just London I believe. Uh, so they all come together, they decide they want to work on a place like the Market District or one of the main streets in, in, in the other cities and they um, put together a business plan, the cost of business plan and they put it to the vote. Um, and it's not something like they go around the clipboard. It's, it, 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 these these uh, ballots are run in the UK by the same people with the legal responsibility for running general parliamentary elections um, or council elections. So it's done very robustly um, within, a, within a legal process. And if more than 50% of people vote yes on a twin threshold, if more, I'll come back to that, if more than 50% of people vote yes, then 100% of the people who are listed in that area, they must pay a levy. There is no option for them, it's a legal obligation, they must pay a levy. Um, the double threshold is by number of people, number of businesses, sorry, that vote, there must be over 50%, um, and by measured by rateable value, the, side, the economic size of the business must be over 50%. So you can't have two or three big, big companies voting yes and other companies voting no and they're all taking on. So it's that double threshold. Um, in Scotland, but not in England, there's also a, there's a requirement of 25% turnout. It must be the only place in the world where lectures are held because there's a minimum turnout. I'm aware of anyway. Um, so, so they're founded on a democratic vote um, and they'll last for three to five years. The legislation says at least three, maximum five. Um, I think that's too little. After, after the first ballot, um, because these things keep getting voted in again and again. Um, the, I think this is a personal view, it's a strongly personal view, that there are weaknesses with the application of, of bids legislation in the UK. Um, I think you know, the, the first wave of practitioners that went across the Atlantic to, to see how this business model worked didn't look at the business model at all. They looked at what money was being spent on it. And they came back and they thought, well, we must take graffiti off our walls and we must clean our streets, etc. Because that's what the Americans do. They can't give our staff guns, because many of the operational staff in the US have guns, <laughs> uh, which is a bit scary. Um, so I, I just felt, I'm going to say that there's, there's quite a lot of bids organisations in the UK spend money on the cleansing of the area. And we have baseline agreements with councils, but we sign this agreement. The council says, well, out over a range of services, these are the things that we deliver in your district. 
and these things have to keep, keep doing them until the length of the pin. If you want to top them up in some way, you're very welcome to do so. So a, a common one is chewing gum on streets. Um, uh, chewing gum on streets in the UK is not considered to be a litter. There's no legal obligation for the council, no statutory obligation for the council to pick, to pick chewing gum off the streets. But it irritates a lot of people, so it's clean chewing gum off the streets. Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure that's, that's what economic development's about. I can understand that people don't like it, but I think as I said, there may be better things to be spending your money on. But also, they're also quite inflexible. Because you have your business plan, you put it to the vote. Business plan's there for five years. Well, hang on a minute, what happens if something drastic happens in the middle of that five years? You've still got to deliver your business plan or you go back to ballot. Um, these, these, on the face of it, are maybe not terribly difficult. They, they are, they, they, for me, they undermine it. It's also quite short terms, especially the three year ones. Uh, I don't know how, how often you hold uh, elections. Um, our, um, our councils are every four years, and our uh, national parliament every five years. <coughs> in, the U, in the USA, they seem to be permanently in election mode. They elect everybody that moves. And they're always in election mode. And it just seems to me that that, that that culture, which is now in the UK forbids, leads to short termism. You must deliver something quickly. Um, but maybe the bigger and more projects are, are not tackled. No matter what media, they are not by by bids the way that the city centre management, not the profit companies were. Well. I've got some evidence of that at the moment. Uh, and because of the legal structures, they tend to be bureaucratic. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's my personal difficulty with the business and the business. It's not to say that they're not good, but they could be better, they could be better tweaked and managed, etc. Also, I think. Uh, when I think back to the area I was managing in Edinburgh City Centre, it was the entire city centre from one end to the other, etc. Um, the bid, the first bid that came in didn't do that. Um, it tackled the, the core shopping area. Uh, and then, for those of you who know Edinburgh, it's um, um, started off the medieval city. It's got a castle stuck up on a hill right in the middle of the city. And it's got what's called the old town, um, the medieval town. Um, and then 250 years ago they decided to build a new town uh, across, the, across the gully. Um, it's now a world heritage site called the old town and the new town, and the new town is older than the old, old, old town, the old town is newer than the new town, but the building's in it. But, but, so, so there's, there's bits of bits of Edinburgh right round this castle, and there are bids, there are three bids in the town centre just now. I was able, when I was the chief executive of the city centre management company, be thinking strategically and working on projects like congestion charging for the city of Edinburgh as a, as a, as a means of controlling traffic in the streets. Um, these bits can't do that now. They tend to have knocked off, in most cities that we have knocked off that strategic element and are doing more of the operational side. Not to say there's a problem with the operational thing, but I think, I think we should be doing both um, in, in these sorts of districts. So in, in some examples in practice, and I've put a personal perspective, because I believe this, this presentation is going on the website. I don't want to upset people back in the UK, <laughs> my former, uh, former colleagues, etc. Um, in Dundee, this was pre, this was the, the city centre manager days where I was employed as a city centre manager by the council and pushed out the term used as arm's length. And we had a, a partnership, very much a council-led partnership, and there was strategic, um, in the planning stage, there was strategic business involvement. In the implementation stage, there was quite wide business involvement. Um, but once we, one, you know, we, we developed something called the Dundee City Centre Initiative, um, very strategic, and over, over, over the course of a decade, we delivered the project in that city centre initiative. And this is to look completely different. You know, first of the retail rankings and these sorts of things. But then, then the council decided, the court, that box is ticked. We've done our city centre now. We're going to target our attention elsewhere. Huge, huge mistake. Because nobody else was standing still. You know, city centres, CBDs, and Main Street, very, very dynamic and very competitive. Um, and retailers, of course, are very 
for the long term thinkers, but they're also very short term, and you know, very, very agile as well. And um, so, Indy stayed still and, and, and has, 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 has suffered for it in the meantime. Um, then the, the function was the time rate was still all work. Um, because the money was paid the same, but it became a more of a marketing job or a marketing and security job. These are important elements of what I consider good place management to be, but um, they are just part of but just part of that. Um, and more recently, just, just last year, then we had a business improvement district vote and lost ballot. Um, I think the focus on that has gone elsewhere. Those of you who were at my presentation 12 months ago will have seen the, the, the massive regeneration of Dundee's waterfront, which is taking up the, the attention and the activity. So uh, what did I say? Strong council, weak business group. Not the problem with strong council, it's the problem with weak business group. Um, Balance, the balance was, uh, was, was, was not correct there. Um, I have to thank you. I don't know if I'm happy through the slides or happy through the presentation. Um, I should apologise in advance. I don't script presentations, so sometimes the, the time is good, sometimes it's not. And by marvellous coincidence, and, and Victor Harbour earlier this week, they got to my slide and my, my timer on my phone went beep, 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 beep. But then I switched off because that wouldn't happen twice. <laughs> like, <laughs> <one's right> twice. <laughs> In, in Edinburgh, um, I've, talk, I've talked a bit about that already, the, the patchwork of bids, etc. Um, and the, the strategic overview. Uh, but but they, are, they are working now on bringing the bids together. We are three separate legal entities. They can't become one legal entity, but they can coordinate and be, be a bit more strategic. Um, and that, that might be quite, quite a good model for you to consider. Um, and this is, this is a cut from our document earlier. Um, uh, can I just flip down and see if oh, there is, yes, there is. Um, we produced a city, city centre action plan. It's for the entire city centre of Edinburgh. We produced a strategy from action plan. Um, knowing and accepting that within that area there are, there are I suppose, your, your terminology about right, character precincts, or maybe, maybe, maybe more than precincts in some cases. Um, and our, our partnership was the independently business led city centre management company and key, private, key uh, public sector players. So the city council at senior level, uh, at that time, there was an organisation. Called Transport Initiatives Edinburgh, who were putting in the tram system, they were trying to get congestion charging, they were trying to access the, the airport in, of, in different ways, and all, all these sorts of big strategic transport projects. Um, and there, were, there was an, or, is an organisation at that time, there's an organisation called Scottish Enterprise. It's not just for the sense of state of trying to generate business and uh, business growth. And, Inward investment and, and these sorts of things. But at that time, not now, but at that time, they also thought that investing in the public realm was, um, was something worth doing. And yeah, there were lots and lots of money for doing that sort of thing. Um, so we brought, we brought these organisations together. There were all sorts of reports in the other time, you know, planning, Saturday planning documents, and none of them went as far as what I think the Market District's own plan is, is doing here. But we tried to bring that together. And um, one thing that caused a bit of difficulty for some of the partners was we, um, th this, this was essentially the structure. We had an action plan coordination group. So that's the Edinburgh City Centre Management Company, Edinburgh Council, Scottish Enterprise, with the World Heritage Trust as well. And there was a, as I mentioned before, the World Heritage Site for planning and urban design reasons. And a huge, huge area of the centre of Edinburgh. So they, they, were, they were all together. And to my responsibility, that was the local chief executive of that organisation, that organisation, that organisation, and the director of city development, which was the second chief executive and then one of his, his directors. And um, that was the that was the organisation that, that met monthly to drive this action plan forward. I chaired that, which I think kind of upset this guy here. Um, but the organisation decided that, that our little humble little organisation would be the driver and the chair behind it. 
Um, and beneath that, we had a delivery team of the, the people who were actually working on the projects to ensure that these people met regularly. Um, because I just think personal chemistry is so important in these situations. So just get together and develop relationships, um, professional relationships. Um, so various short life groups uh, there to, to deliver the project. So that was our that was our internal structure. Uh, but bear in mind that this is uh, this was for the entire city centre of Edinburgh. Uh, now these are just a couple of pages. This slide in the next one. I don't expect to read all that. Um, and just to let you see what's what, you know, how how the action plan looked. Um, so you know we had we, we have the rooms. I don't want to press this button. So the vision up here that talks about international place, the public place of Scotland, etc. And, um, and and then we. You can, you can scan it for yourself, so as you can see my access and all that, you pop the specs up and down all the time. Um, and then there's one of the final chapters, the delivery and accountability. So what we were doing there, if you look down, oops, sorry, wrong one again. If you look down, this, this, well, let's just do it this way round. Um, the priority areas, that was the, the, the actions within these priority areas. Um, the agency, the lead agency and the supporting ones who were involved project champions. So there we are. Here's a public document and it's got people's names in it. And boy oh boy, that made us work to make sure these, these things were delivered. Um, I tried that again recently with a, with a council in Scotland where I'm a, uh, a consultant and I didn't get any place with it. Uh, people don't like to be named. But there we are. And we've got my name in some of them. We've got the head of planning. We've got uh, director of global connections from Scottish Enterprise. Director of city development. So, um, but, and that was just what page one of a number of pages. The people's names were publicly exposed and that made people work a little bit towards the, the deadlines a little more clearly. Uh, that's just an image of Edinburgh to give you a, a feel for, for what Edinburgh looks like. The, uh, that's the castle stuck up in the middle there and it's on its rock. That's the old town which stretches down that ridge. And if you go up to the castle and look down to this street, that's what you see there. Um, and that, that's the most prominent street in Edinburgh, and the ugliest street in Edinburgh. Um, uh, because it was the start of the the residential street is now the principal shopping street in, in, the, in the city. So we got together some money and we commissioned consultants. Mm -hmm. We've got the Adam Side Farrer from a company from Edinburgh uh, did this doodle for us. So we said, well, but actually, what would happen? I know, oh, I think I know. Guys don't like pedestrianisation in this country, uh, so I'm not going to advocate that to you. But it works in some of our cities. Um, so we, this this was the main street. We thought that could be pedestrianised, or a tram running through the middle, and uh, everybody would be happy. And the sun would always shine, the birds would always sing, and everybody would make a lot of money in it. Um, we didn't manage to get that one done, uh, but elements of it were done. So it was a, it was, and, and we, we learned from that. So we. We paid somebody again to come up with a, a document called Capital Streets. Um, and it's essentially a menu of projects. You know, as I said, we like our public realm, we like to invest in our public realm, and particularly in Scotland. Um, we like expensive stones and pretty, pretty artworks and things. Um, so we, we produced this document and said, here, here are some of the projects, doodles like that, that worked up on, just aspiration doodles. And here's the sort of costs for each one of them. And we managed to persuade the funders to do three projects. I haven't got three projects here. That's maybe really just too much, too much um, irrelevant detail for you. Um, but I'm telling you this simply because it's an illustration of how strategic we want it to be. It's not just about place management. I consider this to be place management, place making to be an element of place management as well. And we, um, we said, the only time I got live on television in my career was when I said, let's not down, that's a Princess Street. And they all said, what? We were all kind of beside with the joking. But the phone rang incessantly for two weeks. And everybody apart from one said, thank goodness you said that, that needed to be said, how can we help? So we put together a team of international experts, genuine international experts, not somebody like me who's waffling on about what he's done in his career the genuine international experts, um, and we interviewed them, the six most prominent property developers in the UK at the time, including people like Lindus, um, 
and we have people working for us on a, on a project of how to be gender inclusive street. Um, I think at the conference last year you've seen some of the images of that work in, in, in progress at the moment. So there was, you know, this, is, this is not personal to me, this is the organisation, the partnership body that uh, was, was, was dreaming up these projects and trying to deliver against the, against the strategy. Um, in, in Manchester, they, they did things slightly differently. Um, Manchester's a big conurbation, I'm not sure if it's as big as Adelaide, the conurbation, but the, the city itself is, is, um, is about 350,000, but it's like Adelaide, it goes on and on and on. Um, that area, the coloured area, is the, is the city centre. And uh, my company there was called City Co. We thought the, the Manchester City Centre Management Company Limited was a bit of a mouthful. And we thought, I quite liked, by the way, I don't know if you, if you know that Washington DC, what did they call the company? Downtown DC. I just thought that was great. And I thought it would be nice to try and find something like that for everyone. I couldn't do it in Manchester. We came up with City Co. But it's not quite the same as downtown DC. Um, so that was the operational area, the coloured area. It still is the operational area, the coloured area. Um, that was done, it, it, it's, it's, it's within that area, sorry, that, that area is managed by one of the not-for-profit companies with voluntary financial giving, etc. But within that is a business improvement district, just for the retail sector. And it raises a million pounds a year to spend. Um, I've got my next slide tells us what we spend it on. But also, they go down a level in the, in the way I think you do here. So these are the, I'm not quite sure many quarters, but more than four, I don't know how you get more than four quarters, but anyway, we have more than four quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and it's things like, um, this is the railway station here, so it's Piccadilly, so it's the, it's, it's the gateway. The, the gay village, um, very, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a huge attractor in Manchester, nationally and internationally. To the best of my knowledge, it is or was the most vibrant gay quarter in Britain. Um, and it's economically a great thing to have. Next to that, the red area is called uh, Chinatown. You have a Chinatown here as well. So there, there are all these character areas themed in, in some respects, um, all performing broadly different functions. And they've all got coordinators. Well, they used to have, I don't they still have, I think they do, they've all got coordinators for these precincts. Um, but they work for City Co. City Co is the umbrella organisation. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll come back to why, why we thought at the time that we might approach to do that. Um, Manchester then didn't really have, or that, that organisation didn't really have a responsibility for place making. It was more place management. Um, but we did we did fund a retail strategy in the centre of, the centre of Manchester. At that time it was the UK's third largest retail centre, um, the third largest outside London. Um, I, I think it's maybe been overtaken by one of its rivals and um, its neighbours now. Um, so um, there, was, there, was, there was less of a place making the overview I was an extremely powerful council, it remains an extremely powerful council uh, controlling the agenda. Um, I thought it was a problem there, um, much of the UK doesn't because the council <coughs> managed to the executive are very, very well known and are and set as an example of strong leadership. Um, strong leadership um, can, can be overdone sometimes in my humble judgment. So these, these are the sorts of strategies we, we worked on, you know, and, and Retail strategy for uh, uh, for Manchester. Um, this is this is just picked off the website today. The heart of Manchester bid. So you see, these are the four areas of focus that it has, and of course, I've uh, highlighted uh, in bold in a few words: events, hosting scheme, midweek midweek and evening training and promotional campaigns. All very important. I've got no problem at all with any of that, but for me, it was a place a place making bit is missing from that. And I'm not sure that Manchester, even to this day, does the place making agenda as perhaps as well as it should do. So you start to see that the, in my in my view, in my humble view, the the, the, the sort of creeping 
I say decline, but that's not what's complete. The wrong word because there's so much money in structure and involved in business, including districts these days, but the restriction, the contraction of the areas of responsibility. Now, that's fine if it's been picked up elsewhere, but um, uh, I've called, that's not always the case. Leeds uh, is a big city in the north of England as well, um, who won a big vote in the, I think it's probably less than 12 months ago, in round about, I think it was the last summer that uh, they, they won their ballot. And they too have gone down the whole city centre. Everybody was involved in that. And the, 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 the levy to be applied is the equivalent of 1.5% of the business rates, the property tax, the property tax. And they have got places of £2 million per annum to use. Um, but the, uh, again, if I'm understanding these correctly, they don't do the place making agenda. Uh, that, I'm sure you've got the message by now. I think the place making is critically important. And I think you know, the place that's being proposed for the market district in Manchester, in, uh, in, pardon, in, in, in Adelaide, is, uh, is, a, is, is a good approach to be taking. So in terms of numbers of bids, this is a slide I stole from David's presentation this afternoon. There are now over 200 bids in the UK, from very small areas. Um, Scotland is apart from four cities, and it's a nation of towns, small towns, and there's lots of small bids. Um, so they're limited to what they can do, but right up to the bids in Manchester's and the West End company, o Oxford Street in, in London. I think the figure is eight, eight million pounds per annum is now for what it's been promoted in the contributing <coughs> area. It's big stuff. Um, same with the city of uh, Adelaide. Sorry, for those of you who are not familiar with who are not responsible or responsibility for the centre of Adelaide, but I know the centre of Adelaide better than the new areas. But, uh, but there, are, there are big sums of money, if you choose to do so, that you can, that you can use for promoting and improving your, um, the, the economy and the look of your, of your CDD. And that, that, that bit at the bottom, well, there are 55,000 businesses investing £159 million annually injected into local economies. The heart of London bid was quite was, was recent. It's not it's not Oxford Street, it's just it's close to Oxford Street. It's the primarily the entertainment quarter of the uh, West End of London. Um, some would say it's a it's a world destination um, entertainment area. Seventy five percent of all the businesses in that area voted. A huge number, huge number. We don't get seventy five percent election turnouts so for general elections in our country. Um, and 92% of them voted in favour. I think I'm right in saying that of all the bids that have lasted for three to five years and have gone to a ballot again with the new business plan, they've all voted yes. The last bulk of them have increased majorities. Um, so business in the UK is thinking, this works. This works well for us and we're going to keep on doing it. Um, so reflections. Um, all this has been personal. Um, this, this is especially personal. Um, how do you place making a place management that's about the economy? Um, and I view it in three ways. It's place mending, place making, and place management. Um, mending is more the sort of firefighting, repairing the damage um, um, that's, 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 that's happened there uh, 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 in the past. And I'll, I'll not read all that out to you because you can see it better than I can just now. But that's what I think place management is. It's presentation, the clean, the safe, the vitality, etc. As you know, I personally don't advocate cleaning the streets because that's what the businesses pay in the UK. The businesses pay the rates for council services, and these council services include keeping the streets clean. Um, I, don't, I think that's the case here, but I don't think that's the case here. Um, so that's, a, what, that's what I would call the software elements of the town, of, of, of place management. Marketing and promotion is also software in Britain. Um, and uh, you know, we can do it at Main Street level, we can do it uh, at city level, and we can do it at precinct level. And I've got a view on that as well, but I'm surprised to, to, to learn that. Um, it's, it's accessibility. Um, I've, I've got a view that I'm not sure we can tell you about here, judging by the newspaper last night. I, I, I just see lots and lots of cars driving. I think it's through the CBD. I, th I don't know it's through. I've no way of knowing. I, 
at this stage because I'm not asked. I'm not asked. Um, but I used to have a simple slogan in Dundee, which is drive to Dundee, don't drive through Dundee. So we pedestrianised our course. It was actually impossible for someone to drive right through the heart of the city. They could come in the east and go back out north, etc. But the, 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 the core of the city was, was, was closed. Now, as I say, the conversations I've had um, with, with, with friends in Adelaide this week, I'm not sure that's necessarily um, a, a view that would gain much, much traction here. Uh, it's not just getting here. It, it's, it's nobody, cars don't buy anything. It's people that buy things. So let's get them out of their cars as close as possible to the business, moving around, enjoying themselves, um, lingering, enjoying, coming back, spending more money, etc. Let's make it, let's give them the information to get them moving around and spending their money. Let's make the place legible as well. Um, and that, that includes, um, I mean, there's, there's one look, just, I don't know, just look, look beside. Um, I, I got involved a few years ago in a, in a wayfinding project in Oxford. Oxford's a small city, it's a very densely populated city. It's all the, the university spires and things from hundreds of years. Um, and the great activity is in, in essentially two streets. But there's lots of stuff to see and do in the final ten minutes walk of the, the central point. And I was asked to, uh, to, to design and implement a bespoke pedestrian wayfinding system. One that would intercept people from the car park. The points have arrived, however they got to the city. Intercepts them there and takes them to go. And so follow these signs around the city. Good, good basic stuff. Um, and partly through the partly through the project, uh, I kind of caught up to the 21st century and realised that this is not just about physicality anymore and painted signs. It's about digital information as well. So what we did is we we, we got the at that time it was QR codes, but of course QR codes are largely superseded now by the, the tap induction things. So on, on a sign, we find the sign, you just go to your smartphone, tap, and it opens your web app. Market the six web app or Hanley Main Street's web app at the page that you want is relevant to that where you tap it. And the Oxford one was designed in here, near, and next principles. So if you're standing in one of the fantastic historic squares, it would tell you a story about where you are, what's over these high walls, what's in that building. Look touch here for a little, a little um, a documentary about it. Or look what the Queen did 50 years ago. She was here. All sorts of stories. Just primarily for the, the locals don't need that, locals know where they're going, etc. But the visitors don't always. And once you've seen what's here, this is what's near. Go there next. We head them off and we gently manage them in certain directions. And we say once you've once you've been there and you've seen there, next. Here, near, next. Go there next. And if you just see that application in something like this district, making people making people um, move around much more quickly. I'm just being reminded of five minutes, so speed up. Um, and data. Um, how much do we actually know about the area we're managing? The UK has not been very good at that. Um, you may be, uh, but we haven't been. One thing we're getting better at is evening and nighttime economy. Um, for, for quite a long time, for decades, we managed our city centres 9 to 5, broadly speaking. But now the pegs drop. But actually, what, what happens in the evening and in the nighttime? We actually want, might want more to happen. And it needs to be managed perhaps in a different way to the daytime economy. So there's almost a movement now of, uh, of nighttime managers. And I just read recently that um, I think it's been linked into somebody in Adelaide that, uh, that, that, that made me see this. But um, in Amsterdam was just appointed a nighttime mayor. I don't know what the nighttime mayor does, what he or she does yet, but something I, I hope to have looked at before, before today. Uh, but you might want to Google that yourselves. Uh, so speeding up the, the core, these are, these are the, what I consider to be the core requirements of effective governance models. So clear purposes and objectives, but it's, it's obvious, isn't it? Um, strong partnership and mutual respect. Let's, let's stress, that should be underlined, mutual respect. Um, democratic foundations, and we've talked about business improvement districts, it doesn't need to be just business improvement districts, and getting businesses participating. This is not about a few pointy heads, you know, people. Some of, some of you in the room are class as pointy heads, like me. Um, others are running businesses, don't class them as pointy heads. But it needs people, everybody to be, to be involved. Adequate resources. So that's the sound and fair finances we talked about in business improvement districts. 
rather than the baby boom going around um, for small sums of money, which means small impact. Um, and well, leadership's all I've forgotten about so far, but you know, you do need leadership because it's absolutely essential that there is somebody in your my judgment, absolutely essential, there's somebody with gravitas, that's respected, with an effective leader in, in the organisation, however big or however small. Um, other obvious things are stability, well, scale and rapid delivery. I've just, just got two or three more slides, so um, if you bear with me for a second, David, I'll just get through them quickly. Well, option work, sorry, option one is a network of precincts and main streets. Um, I, think, I think I had in mind the market district specifically when I was putting this slide, this slide together. Um, so, option one is what it says there, the network. Um, but the, I think we each manage and promote our own place, our own main street. So, and within the CBD context, I'm not 100% convinced about that. We've tried that in the UK, and that's that's not that's not necessarily what's what we find is strongest. The, the, the competition for the world CBDs and these sorts of things, the Vec Town malls, and I've seen quite a lot of these in Adelaide as I've driven around. Sorry, guys, for those of you who've got the malls up competing in the centre of Adelaide just now. Um, I think I read someplace, I think it was one of Dave's presentations, about the, the 82% of people surveyed have in the past year or year have, a visit, have left the state for retail purposes. I don't know what the converse figure is, how many people come from other states to, sh to, to shop here. That would be interesting. But the, the cities, you know, plant, as I say, plant, plant, why, are, why are businesses fighting the guy across the road when they should coming together to, uh, the guy around the corner should be coming together to fight out the town malls, other state capitals, the internet, uh, and the, the numerous suburban main streets that I've seen. Guys, those of you who are in, in the council areas, out with, out with the, 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 the city areas, you can turn that around uh, to, uh, for yourselves. Option two uh, is the CBD level. A strategic partnership with all the big guys and all the small guys across the across the city, building the CBD of the state capital as an internationally competitive destination. Uh, again, I'm sorry, I've only been here a week, so I might be saying things that are getting done anyway, but priority, and I'm being offensive. I don't mean to be. Um, okay, and, it, and by coming together, I think that uh, the destination is often greater than some of its parts, and they're being, and they're being managed separately. So option three, the obvious, it's both these things together. It's a bit like the Manchester model where we're looking strategically, we're looking nationally, we're perhaps looking internationally, but at the same time, we've got the network of precincts and, uh, um, and, and, and main streets. And uh, if, oh, there's a nice little phrase at the bottom there. Um, so I'm almost there. So competitive places, um, this, is, this is something that perhaps you did earlier in the presentation. In the information age, of course, it's, it's, it's easy to, to find out what other competitors do, or what good ideas there are from across the planet. But it also makes it easy for your competitors to see what you're doing. Um, the world, whoever's interested, knows the market district plan. And they might think, oh, there's no here. So my, my, my suggestion would be your own bit. That's, that's me stepping outside my brief just now, I apologise, but um, um, you know, if you're not the first mover, you might be able to the miss the opportunity to be innovative. Um, so you've got, the, you've got the dilemma for yourselves of now you've got your plan together as an evolution or as a revolution. And this, remember I'm a planner, planners think, we are educated to think in timescales that 5, 10, 15 years, hence the attempt at stretching of our planning out. The retailers, of course, think in much, much shorter time scales. Both are correct, but both must find an accommodation and come together. Um, if we wait 5, 10 or 15 years then, before we do things in the retail sector, then the retail sector will change dramatically from when we started to, when we started to plan. So there's the concluding thought. That's, that's me stepping out with my brief in a couple of respects. Um, it's, um, it's not the UK. Um, and it's me interfering and offering a, offering a thought. Um, I just think the plan you've got just now for the market district is a fantastic starting point. Um, oh, no. <laughs>
get your, get your, get your, whichever governor is tomorrow you choose. There might be nothing I've said today. You might think that needs yourself. That's fine. But whatever you choose, there you go. I think, I think that's my last slide. Can you just check that? That's my last slide. So that's, that's, um, that's my presentation to you today. I'm happy later on the agenda to answer.